Do you have a favorite Christmas gift that you've ever gotten? Oh my god. I don't know. I mean, as a kid, toys, I guess. But <laughs> <laughs> I asked you for a favorite I Christmas don't know. gift, not like a genre. Welcome to Too Much. Our podcast about, well, whatever. From issues of the world to topics of lesser grandeur. We've got you covered with a little bit too much to say about everything. So let's start the show. I am the hormone monster called Mariah Carey, Michael. And I am not a present, but I am a gift, Cody. (laughs) A gift, they say. All right, Cody, what's going on with you? Uh, I don't know, nothing. In lockdown. In lockdown? This, since the last episode aired, so much has happened. Well, not grand stuff, but one, I finished watching The Undoing. So good. It was a good show. A lot of people were not happy about the ending, which I'm like, I get it, but I'm okay with the ending. I like the ending. I was okay with it too. I would have preferred the ending more if the father who committed the crime jumped off. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Yeah, get over it. I would have preferred the ending if the killer jumped off the bridge at the end. I wanted him to die. Yeah, but then they, yeah, they they could have. Yeah. But that would have been too typical, I think, maybe. Not if he took the kid with him. Yeah, that would have been something. I wanted him to go with the kid. Yikes. Yikes, indeed. Uh, Let's see, what else happened? Today's episode is a Christmas episode. It's a holiday episode. And we watched Mariah Carey's... Oh, yes. ...Christmas special on Apple TV. It was really good. Not (laughs) sponsored. I wish. It was really good. I liked all the songs they chose. It was cute to see Ariana and her perform together because, you mm-hmm. know, that whole thing. And j Hud, of course, amazing singer. And we know j Hud loves Mariah, so she would definitely do it. Uh, the songs were good. I realized, I thought Mariah was going to use her old vocals on the songs, but she didn't. Why would she? Because she's a perfectionist and she's going to want to make sure she sounds her best. Yeah, but she wants to, obviously she's going to record them again for a new special. But she didn't have to. She has so many different versions of these songs over the years. She could have easily used any one of those and we would have, most people would have not, would not have known. Yeah, I guess so. But I could tell she re-recorded it this year because the riffs were different. The runs were different. Her voice was a little different. I'm like, I like the fact that she re-recorded it and I'm hearing her voice as it is in 2020. Yeah. Even her whistle tones were different because her voice has changed a lot well, over the years. She's what, like 50? Uh, she is eternally 16, I think she says. Gross. <laughs> but in the real world, she's like, uh, yeah. she's a middle-aged woman. She is. I really enjoyed it. And she looked amazing the entire time. She did look amazing. Yeah, sometimes she have the, she has the tendency to look like she doesn't have a neck. Only because <laughs> her face is chubby. She has really puff, chubby cheeks. And her boobs are like the size of melons. I mean, she, and she does have a shorter neck than yeah. most people. Yeah. But she looked amazing. Beautiful gowns, beautiful gowns. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought there would have been more songs, to be honest. I know. When it came to the end, I was like, wait, huh? Yeah. And then they're like, one more. And they did All I Want for Christmas. Spoiler alert, whatever. Yeah. But I would have liked more songs. Yeah, I thought there should have been some more songs. And then she was singing, I think, Silent Night. And there's a tear rolling down her eye. I'm like, what's a tear for? Silent Night's a beautiful song. It's a beautiful song. Her version is one of my favorites of all times. But I don't know why she was crying. (laughs) She loves Christmas. It's emotional to her. I guess. Oh, by the way. Uh, everyone has been coming for me since that last episode. As they should. As they should? Yeah. First of all, people, if you recall what I said was, and I said what I said, I don't know The weekend that well. I don't know his repertoire, his discography, whatever the fuck it is. I'm not that familiar with his music. And I just felt... If he's going to cry and be a bitch about the Grammys, he shouldn't. I don't think he had any reason to. However, as I promised one of my listeners who listened on the YouTube page, she made a, her comment saying The weekend's really cool. I said, all right, I'll check him out. I did. And I like him. I'll check him out. An artist that came out like a decade ago. Oh, whatever. I mean, I've heard his rendition of Crazy in Love, and I thought it was cute. One of the biggest artists in the world. I'll check him out. Okay, well, you, like keep, you, you keep saying one of the biggest artists in the world. Because you could, but... t- you could turn, on, you don't, turn on the radio any time of day, 
listen who, for a few minutes and you, you're gonna hear a weekend song who so listen to the radio i'm just saying you're like oh i haven't listened to the weekend in a decade sure no that's the thing i don't listen to the radio and i only play what's on my phone or i hear songs it's the around weekend me, and he's just not on my radar yeah okay but i listen to him and i like a lot of the songs he has Anyway, let's move on. I'm over that uh, Anyways, guys, weekend conversation because you killed my vibe last week. Whatever. Uh, I did listened you see, to him. Um, I liked him. Did you see Dion Warwick uh, tweeting him? She tweeted at him? Yeah. I remember she tweeted at someone who wanted a PS5. <laughs> I heard about that in the news, yeah, this week. But then she was on Twitter, I don't know, yesterday or something, and she tweeted Chance the Rapper. She's like, why do you have the rapper in your name? Obviously, you're a rapper. Why isn't your name Chance? Oh, but we know Dion Warwick is not the one sitting there tweeting. Well, whoever's doing it is uh, going after Chance the rapper, and she was like, "I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be Dion the Warwick." <laughs> and then she also tweeted at the weekend, and she's like, "Why do you have the in your name, and why isn't the weekend, or why isn't weekend spelt properly?" And then he um, like quote tweeted it, and he was like, "Oh, getting dragged by Dion Warwick. <laughs> this is such an honor." Iconic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's probably her niece or somebody d- running her Twitter for her. But Dionne Warwick, legendary, love her. Speaking of social media, there is this kid on my Instagram page that has been entertaining me for the past week and in the most ratchet way ever. He <laughs> so he has these little competition shows, co- not competition shows, but he hosts a little competition on his story. His oh, Instagram him. Story. Yes. Uh you know that for the listeners, he'll have like a bunch of people come and post their photos and then people will vote on it. So he's like a little mini RuPaul in his own little world uh, and people get eliminated every week. But that's not the story. The story is he has this boyfriend or had and they were together for a while. They kept posting each other or he kept posting the boyfriend and all of a sudden out of the blue, he just starts going in on the guy like you bum in N word, you this, you that. I upgraded you. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have a pot to piss in. Blah blah blah. Just dragging him, <laughs> dragging his boyfriend. And in the next breath, on the next story, he's like crying. Oh my god, I'm gonna kill myself. I'm so lonely without you. I can't oh live without you. God. I'm so sorry. Please come home. Blah blah blah. In the next story, I'm gonna kill you. The next time I see you. <laughs> And he's just going in and the, the ending of it up, well, up until this morning, he was posting this shit. Yeah. And this has been like a week and a half worth of drama. Yikes. So this is a story. The boyfriend moved in with him and wasn't working. So he was the breadwinner at the time. Mm. And the boyfriend was cheating on him the entire time. Oh my God. That's what he says. I mean, this is all one sided. And the boyfriend is now with this new guy and the boyfriend left him moved into the to the new guy's house with the new guy and his parents and has a job at Walmart. And so he's upset because he thinks, well, you got a job at Walmart. Now you think you're somebody. <laughs> 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 now you think you can just leave me. And he is going in on the boyfriend. He's going in on the boyfriend's new boyfriend saying that the guy has HIV. And I'm like, oh my you God. cannot be serious. Whether this is true or just you talking at the side of your neck because you're upset, you don't say that. Yeah, exactly. You don't say that about people. That's, That's so foul. Gross. And he's going in and he's even, he did a whole YouTube thing crying in front of the camera and talking about it. Side note, I don't believe anyone who sits in front of a camera and cries about whatever they're going through. It just feels fake as heck. Uh, so that happened he's like oh when the boyfriend came back to get his clothes i was i was on my knees in the rain like huh. w- like with based on how he's explaining explaining it it's like the car door is open at the passenger side he yeah. was like his elbows on this passenger seat his feet out in the rain and he's begging the boyfriend that is so bad please don't go with this guy meanwhile the new boyfriend's like in the car too being no like, being like girl go leave us alone <laughs> and he's crying and begging i'll change i'll do anything and the boyfriend kicked him in the face 
And then they had a whole fight because that's when the boyfriend came to pick up his clothes and the boyfriend bit him because he wanted to fight the new boyfriend. And he, I even saw the bite mark. He posted the bite oh, mark. So I'm God. like, maybe they actually did fight, but he is a little crazy. So I'm like, did you bite yourself? I don't know. <laughs> that is just so messy. It's a mess. And sad. Oh, so sad. Every other day. And then after all of that happened, the bite, the fight, the kick in the face. Oh, if you kick me in my face, it's over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. After all of that happened, he was still posting up photos of him and the boyfriend. I still love you. I was the one that was wrong. I lied about you to public. Basically saying all the bum shit he co- talked about the guy was a lie and he was just upset and blah, blah, blah. He's going to fight for his relationship. He wants him back. And then after that, he went back to say he's a bum and he's broke and he bought him everything he owns. And I'm like, you pick a side, pick a side. You said you lied about that shit before. Evidently like, not. It or just, just lying again. I don't know but it. I found it so funny. <laughs> I did. I did not watch the YouTube channel thing because I'm like, you done said everything on your story. Yeah. It's just entertaining scrolling through and reading all that mess. Jeez. But anyways, I know. But then he's like 22. They're young. So? And they're dumb. So? I know. I don't know. I don't th- I don't know who would be worth that kind of... If somebody wants to leave you... Let them go. Just let them go. Like, Why are you trying to beg for them to stay? So you can be with someone who's only like half in this relationship? Begging. No. And then getting kicked in the face. I'm still hung up on getting kicked in the face. <laughs> My face, my face. It would be over. Oh my god, this is my money maker. I wouldn't even be chasing anybody out in the street and hanging halfway out of their car in the rain. Good golly. Anyways, time for weird shit happening in the world today. Did you see this Harry Styles banana photo? Yeah, I did. And thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. I mean, it's very on brand for him. He's like a rock and roll 21st century guy. So that so they eat bananas sexually? What? Did you hear what I asked you? The ban- I thought you were talking about his cover. Yeah. Yeah. So did you see the one where he's eating a banana? No. Then why did you say yes? Oh, I really thought you were talking about the photo of him on the cover of the magazine. What about the banana photo? Oh my God. I was just asking. No, you sa- what about it? I was asking if you saw the one where he's peeling a banana and eating it, like, no. phallically. Okay. Anyways, that's besides the point. So, um, obviously, people had a lot of uh, backlash to it. Remember when he wore that dress on the cover of... Yes, that's what I thought you were talking about first. <laughs> so, you didn't see the new, the new magazine he was on this week? No. Oh, my gosh. Okay, anyways, he's on the cover of Variety, and he's wearing another dress. And Work. um what's her name? Uh I think it was Stacy Dash. No, no, who's the other one? Candace Cam something. Candace Cameron Bure. I know. <laughs> Candace Owens. Owens, yeah. Um she said like uh bring bring back real men or bring back masculine men. Yeah, or so something like that. That's what she that. said. She was but I thought I didn't know it was for the new cover. Well, that's why I'm like I'm I... confused if she said it about the old cover. She said something about this new one. But she said, I think she said something last time too. That's why you're like a banana cover. I'm like, in my mind, I'm th- I mean, you're probably talking about the same cover because this is the one where he was in this. Uh, For Vogue? I don't remember if it was Vogue or what, but it was some designer ball gown. Yeah, no, not that one. Because she, on... she mentioned, she talked about him then. So she talked about him again this week. He's on the cover of Variety wearing women's clothes again. Okay. And um, whatever she said. Um, what's her name? Noah Cyrus oh, posted God. on her Instagram story yeah. a picture of Harry and she said um, she wrote you nappy headed hoes could never <sighs> so I saw this and I'm mortified for her because I don't for her first three things I like Harry Styles <laughs> and I support whatever he wants to wear and I, su- I do not support toxic masculinity, which a lot of black women live for. Candace Owen being one of them. And I'm not coming for black women because I love black women. I'm a feminist. My mom is a black woman. My sisters are black women. 
but I call a spade a spade. A lot of us have been socialized for a long time that men have to be this, men have to be that, and if you're not, then you're not a man. And this is the same type of men that a lot of women cry about saying that they're not shit because they don't call them men at that time, they call them the N-word. Ends ain't shit because ends don't do this, but then you are perpetuating this end type of behavior. Like, if a guy doesn't do this, he's not a real man. And that this is the same thing you cry about saying they keep hurting you. What Harry Styles is doing is not hurting anybody. He's living his life. He is in doing what makes him happy. Candace Owen has an issue with it because she thinks men shouldn't wear dresses when, in fact, as, Af as African descents... A lot of men wore garments that weren't freaking pants. Mm -hmm. It was a big wraparound thing, and it's basically a dress. Historically, most cultures had men wearing dresses. So get over it, Candace. Uh, thirdly, what was the second? The Candace thing. She needs to get a life. Okay. Uh, thirdly, Noah Cyrus, stay in your lane. I do not support you using that whole nappy comment. And I don't think she really knew what the hell she was saying. She, Because a lot of these white girls, they hear black people talking and they think it's cool and they just repeat shit, not understanding what the hell this shit is. Yeah, but in this... You will get dragged. In this day and age, I feel like everybody knows what nappy means and... Oh, everyone should know? know, but a lot of people don't. I was watching Yanla the other day and this biracial couple... The woman is black. The guy is white of Irish or some nor northern European descent. His mother had an issue with the wife, like, taking a day to go do her hair and stuff. And Ianla had to say, like, you're prejudiced. And I'm not saying you're racist, but you're prejudiced. And you're making assumptions about your daughter-in-law saying that she's not a great wife or mother because you don't understand the black experience. And she has naps. And she has a specific type of hair and she needs to take time to take care of that. It's, she can't just wash her hair like you do in the morning and walk out the, the door, go to work. And it dries on the, the way and it's all fine. And she had to like explain that to her. And she's like, I didn't know. I didn't understand that. I don't know how you can But then again, this but... is a middle-aged woman. Noah Cyrus is like a young girl that's exactly. with her in the industry. So she should know better. That's my point. Like I, I wonder what Miley said to her. Miley would have been like, bitch, you know better than to say any dumb shit like yeah, that. Yeah, Miley, Miley was like, have, haven't you learned from me <laughs> and my mistakes over the past few years? Damn. Let me, this was the photo, this, do you see, you didn't see this photo? No, I didn't see this photo. This is a photo of him wearing a powder blue suit, very Victorian-esque with a white shirt underneath that's hanging out. And this doesn't look like woman's clothing to me, but he's eating a banana. So I guess Candace has an issue again because he's eating a banana and dressing frilly. Well, I mean, the clothes, yeah, the clothes are they're frilly. But it's not that feminine. Well, it looks like there's room for some chestuses in that blazer he's wearing. I, I don't see that. But anyways, video. he posted that, that picture from the Variety cover mm -hmm. shoot on his social media, and he wrote, Bring Back Manly Men, which is what she said about oh, he's his vote. Oh, taunting thing. her. So yeah, he was teasing people who... Bring Back Manly Man. I had this conversation... A, a, I've had this conversation a lot. I have a friend who's very traditional. You know, men should be with women, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. He's a bisexual person, by the way. He's very conflicted. <laughs> uh, but he's always like, oh... When I grew my hair out, he's like, you need to cut your hair shorter, and but whatever. I'm like, screw you. I will do whatever the hell I want with my hair. It's mine. And he's like, oh, men are this and that. I'm like, so would you classify me as a man? Like, as a man? He's like, well, yeah. I'm like, so what are your criteria for a man? And he's like, well, you have to be able to provide and you have to do this. And, and I'm like, do I not do everything you just said? Yeah. Uh, but I don't have my hair like cut low and I don't necessarily dress like you do which is very like stiff and uptight <laughs> and I don't subscribe to a lot of these arrogant toxic ways that a lot of men have but yet I'm still a man and I'm more of a man than a lot of you people with your pants was I with you when I saw this guy downtown walking yeah. with his pants were at his knees 
It was yeah, that was pretty comical. And it was so freaking cold. I'm like, his ass must be ashy as hell and frozen. It was so cold. We live in Toronto. It's cold here. And his pants were at his knees and he had on like ball shorts. And he, the way he was walking like a duck or like a freaking penguin because he couldn't walk properly. And he thought that was cool. And to a lot of girls like Candace Owen, she probably thinks, well, that's what a manly man is. Okay, she doesn't think that. I but... don't know what the hell this... <laughs> I don't know what the hell this right-wing Republican sister, quote-unquote, thinks. She's weird to me. She is weird. But yeah, that's Candace for you. Uh, my story has to do with a Filipino girl. <laughs> she orders food online and 42 riders arrived with the same parcel to her door like 42 uber eats people yeah like i don't know what they have in the philippines but kind of like uber eats or skip the dishes or whatever 42 different people arrived with her order she ordered it 42 times or the app just like the app glitched because wow. it wasn't the order wasn't going through so she kept tap tap tapping the screen <laughs> she got 42 orders Oh, I would have been God. like, thank you, and this is going to hold me over for the next month. <laughs> yeah, really? I hope she loved whatever she ordered, because that's all you're eating. Damn. Yeah, that was funny. I If so, if that happened to me, I would be so happy. As long as I don't have to pay for it. Yeah, I was going to say, she has to check and make sure she wasn't charged. That's the thing. I think she was only charged once, and because it's, it's a glitch on the back end. It just gave her all these orders. That so, would be so crazy. So that restaurant is out of money because they're only getting paid for one, which I'm pretty sure whoever the owners of the app are, they would pay the restaurant for whatever they lost. Yeah, yeah. Did you hear that um, Canada's getting rid of some of their bills? Or Yeah, some of their bills. Really? Yeah. Uh, I could... I don't see why. Why would they? You know what? What? It's not a bad idea. Whenever any kind of like, whenever a country gets rid of some bills, like the least the, the less bills you have, it, it kind of translates to how well you're doing economically. You think so? I think so. I remember back in Jamaica, uh, when the economy was really shit, we kept adding bills. <laughs> oh my god! At one point, there was a five thousand dollar bill. I was like, okay, I'll need to calm down. <laughs> um. There's this guy, uh, yeah, in Ontario, and he went to the bank to deposit two $1,000 bills. I'm sorry, do we have $1,000 bills? Well, that's the point. We don't anymore. Yeah, okay. Um, deposit two $1,000 bills and the bank wouldn't take it. How long ago has Canada um, discontinued that? Uh, it's, they're discontinuing it January 1st. But I've never seen a $1,000 bill here. That's why they're discontinuing it. Because no one uses it. Yeah. Yeah, because even when I go to the bank and I'm trying to, like, withdraw money and I'm like, give me a few thousand, the most I'll get is a $500 bill. Yeah, they're so rare. I've never seen a $1,000 bill. Um, I don't know when they stopped print. Oh, yeah, they stopped printing them in 2000. Oh, my God. It's been 20 years. Yeah, but it's money. You can have it lying around. True. And I would be mad as hell if they didn't take that. I yeah. would be like, you need to take that money. They're like, oh, well, it's going to be devalued soon. I'd be like, well, I guess you should submit it to the Bank of Canada before it gets evaluated. Like, that's right. not my problem. You're my bank. Exactly. But uh, apparently the Bank of Canada will honor them forever. Oh, love that. But you have to send it to the Bank of Canada. I don't mind. I'd send it there and get, get them to give me a money order. Oh, yeah, for sure. They're also getting rid of the $25 bill, the I've $500 never seen... bill. I like the $500 bill, though. Why? I don't know. I like the color of it. And they're also getting rid of the $1 and $2 bill. What are they going to do? Make it into paper money or just don't use any toonies? And... Wait, were there... you? I didn't know they had $1 and $2 bills. Yeah. That's the thing. I'm not from here and being here for the past few years, I've only seen toonies and loonies and these are like coins. I've never seen a paper dollar bill or a paper $2 bill in Canada. Not because even it 25 makes no sense. It, it I prefer paper. Why? It's because uh, coins make too many noises. It makes too much noise and it's heavy. Yeah, but that's that's why we have them because they're durable. Eh, I get it, but I think I'd prefer paper. And I always ask this question. I think I've talked about this on the podcast before. I don't know. 
uh, when you go to clubs that you pay entertainers and singles and stuff, in they Ca- give them American. I'm. Where do you get the American money from? I'm not going when to. When you go there, so you can get it changed American, at yeah, the bar. American ATMs work. Yeah, didn't realize that because I'm like, am I supposed to give y'all five dollars a pop? I'm not rich. Nope. <laughs> I'm going to give you a dollar. What am I supposed to do? Throw a loony at you? But the thing is, this money will be like collector's items. Like, I know my parents have, like, the $1 and $2 bill. Yeah. Because it went out of circulation, like, I don't know, 60 years ago. A long time ago. So it's going to be worth My parents do have, they collect these things, too. Like, the American $2 bill, so rare. They have it. I remember my dad gave it to me once, and he says, keep hold on to it. Don't spend it oh i spent that shit <laughs> i don't remember what was going on and i was hungry or something and i spent it i wish i didn't uh but yeah i would hold on to it if i had one if it was a thousand dollar one i probably wouldn't but you'd just be like i need the money <laughs> yeah it's a thousand i don't even know why he's sitting on two thousand dollar bills for Anyways, 20 years i've never seen i don't even Do think... You think he was like uh, rearranging his house and found a two thousand dollar bill in his couch like oh 20 years old <laughs> <laughs> in his couch no he said uh he got one he was selling a car and the other one was a, like a christmas gift how long ago did you sell that car though because i doubt so you sold this car this year and someone's like here's a thousand dollar bill i don't know i mean i guess they're still they're still around they stopped printing them in 2000 but they're around until they fall apart I know. 20 years in circulation after you stop printing. That's amazing. But now we have the plastic bills. So it's like, they, I love they're so those. durable. Exactly. The plastic bills are durable. I feel like if we want to go back to a do- $2 bills, $1 bills. We're never going to. If they wanted to, they, they could because the plastic bills are very durable. The only way a plastic bill is going to like get messed up is if you leave it in the dryer or you iron it or it goes near fire. <laughs> I remember I used to iron my money because it was Why? paper because I hated when it was crinkly and ugly. Okay, let's move on because that's weird. Oh, everyone does that. I'm I'm sure I'm not alone. If you are listening right now and you have like paper money, like American money, and it's been crinkly and nasty looking, have you ironed it before? I have. So you guys have been listening to the podcast. Thank you. But if the Too Much Podcast isn't enough, there's a whole lot more content on Michael's YouTube. Yeah, I post like every single week and I have literally too much going on over there. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and please drop a comment and tell us what you thought or what you'd like to see Michael do next. Bye. Oh, no. Back to the show. Okay, this episode is our holiday episode. Uh, How many holidays do you know of? in this time of year uh i don't know i never thought about it three well you we have christmas of course yeah uh, you have hanukkah yeah uh hanukkah is you know that newer one <laughs> and, newer sorry wait ha- hanukkah no it's a jewish holiday <laughs> yeah no you uh, know what i was thinking of um, kwanzaa? kwanzaa kwanzaa yeah <laughs> it's those three actually i'm there is this i was one. gonna say there's another one isn't there this one is called Omisoka. Now, this is New Year's Eve. It's considered the second most important day in Japanese tradition. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, but those are the only ones, really. Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, and Boxing Day, I guess. Day. I mean, if you want to count that, but those are the holidays in December. Uh, what is your Christmas tradition growing up? What was your Christmas tradition? Um... We used to go to like a family Christmas dinner on Christmas Eve. We did that for a long time until my family moved like further away from those family members. So then it became some Christmas dinner at some point in December and like people get older. Lots of my cousins have their own families. Yeah. So they have other places to go on Christmas. It's like became a whole thing. Um, But that's pretty much it. And then obviously I have, I usually do like christmas morning with my family like my core family your immediate family yeah Yeah. and uh yeah so every year for the past 20 something years you've spent christmas with your family yeah yeah christmas morning pretty much i go over there at some like usually in years that i haven't lived with them i'm usually over there by like 10 a.m or something for christmas morning cool what about you 
uh christmas i've always spent it with my family but for the past few years i haven't seen my family so i haven't been able to spend it with them uh i make christmas wherever i am <laughs> basically how so uh because it's my favorite ho- holiday of life and if i'm by myself i'm going to do the decorations i'm going to cook the food and i'm going to buy myself nice gifts and i'm going to Turn up Mariah Carey, Whitney Houston, Celine Dion, and all those Christmas albums to the max. My neighbors are going to hate me, and I'm going to have a jolly old time eating Christmas cake. A lot of people don't like it, but the way we make it back home, I love it. It's just fruits and a lot of alcohol. So at the end of the day, it just tastes like you're eating rum. (laughs) I love that cake. Uh, yeah, that's what I've been doing for the past few years. If I have friends, I'll celebrate Christmas with my friends if they're around, around that time. But yeah, Christmas is amazing to me. Your favorite holiday? Favorite holiday. And it's not because it's the birth of Christ, because y'all know I don't believe in that stuff. I mean, I'm spiritual, but the whole religion thing missed me with all of that because there's too much inconsistencies, too many lies, and I just can't. But the idea of Christmas for me is like what the idea of Thanksgiving is for some people because I don't celebrate Thanksgiving at all. It's about family giving and just spreading love. That's Christmas for me. And I love the lights and the gift giving and it just feels magical. Yeah, I like that time of year. I mean, it's very consumer driven, but it's still amazing to me. (laughs) It's become less of a big event uh, as you get older. Right. I can't wait to have kids so it becomes bigger. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. And I think when you're in school, there's a lot of anticipation. It's like you're working towards the Christmas break and then you get a solid two weeks off. It's not like that when you're an adult. Um, Right. I remember my first couple of jobs I had to work through Christmas. It killed me. <laughs> oh my gosh. I was over it. I'm like, who the hell needs a job at this point? I'm done. My first one of my first jobs, I was like an entertainment coordinator for this hotel. And hotels don't close. I mean, people want to travel on holidays. Christmas morning, I'm getting up, like, and I was for, like, the kids. I entertain the kids and stuff. I have to be planning events and playing volleyball with kids. I mean, it was fun. (laughs) (laughs) But I'm like, I would rather be home baking cookies with my family right now. Yeah. So that sucked. And then I got an office job, and then they were like, we don't care about Christmas either. (laughs) (laughs) And I had to work and I was like, that's when I realized whatever job I'm getting, it needs to be something that accommodates my love for the holidays and I don't have to work. When I got this nicer job and they're like, you get Christmas off. But then this job, it was an American company and I'm living here in Canada. So I got all the American holidays off and I had to work on all the Canadian holidays, Hmm. which was annoying. People are like, we're going to the beach on family day. You want to come? I'm like, no, I got to (laughs) work. I don't have a four day weekend. Well, family day is not like a stat. So even on like Thanksgiving here, I had to work and Mm. I got the American Thanksgiving off when everyone's like, we're working, bitch. (laughs) Well, time you get overtime, no? Uh, Yeah, Yeah. I got overtime for all of those holidays, which was great. I used to work on Christmas when I had a part time job. When I worked at the movie theater, Mm. Christmas is the busiest day of the year for a movie theater you know i heard that it's like absolutely slammed but i didn't know because i've never been to the theater on a christmas day i've gone to the movie theater on christmas like several years in a row uh like it was a tradition yeah. at that point i mean well when i worked at the theater i got free tickets so it would be like Lucky. easy to go but it's kind of like you know you wake up do your gifts um eat some breakfast and then go watch a movie yeah, put the turkey in the oven, go to the movie theater, come home, eat dinner. You know what? I hate the t- I hate a turkey. I hate a turkey too. I hate turkey. The meat is just dry and it doesn't taste as good as chicken. There's this weird taste about it. It's a little bit bitter or gamey. I don't know. I'm not for turkey. But what I will eat is a turkey neck. <laughs> now that sounds country as hell. Yeah. <laughs> but... You stew a turkey neck or curry that bitch with some, like, lentils or peas or whatever. Oh, it's bomb. A turkey neck is... Jerk that turkey neck. Fry that turkey... If you are from the island, 
or you are of, you know, whatever, a minority descent, more than likely you understand what I'm talking about. Because I know a lot of Asians understand the turkey neck thing. Uh, country people down in the States, they get it. Like They're into fried turkey neck and whatever. If you're from the Caribbean, you eat that shit too. But we don't want the turkey meat like that. <laughs> Just the neck. Just no the meat. neck. The neck bone. Give me all of that. Sop it up. Have you ever broken the the wishbone? I, I used to do that when I was a kid. They're like, break the wishbone and make a wish. I was like, oh, I did that when, when I was a kid. But come to think of it, as an adult, I can't recall even seeing a wishbone. Really? I remember just randomly, like a few years, my mom like put it aside. I'm like, what the hell's going on? She's like, oh, you break it. I'm like, <laughs> people and their superstitions or something else, man. Uh, yeah. I, mean, I don't care. I mean, as a little kid, it was like cute. But now that I'm grown up, it's like, I don't have time to play with my food. I'm eating. It's a damn bone. <laughs> I'm not say, putting aside a freaking wishbone to break later. I don't even like playing with my food like that. When I'm eating, I'm eating. I eat it, then I'm done. Toss the bones aside. Mm. But my favorite um, thing about Christmas dinners is always the desserts. I love the... Because I do... Instead of a turkey, I do a roasted chicken. And I don't eat a lot of red meat or any red meat at all. But I will make ham for my family. I'll make roast beef for them. I'll do lobster. Like, whatever they want, I'll make all of it. But my thing is just I'll eat my baked chicken and whatever, and that's that'll be it. But I love the desserts. There's always cakes and muffins and just sweet stuff, and that's what I live for. Yeah, I remember when I was younger going to, like, Christmas parties. That was always fun. Cookies and... You know what I can't stand though? What eggnog? Oh, I didn't. I don't. I've never tried it. I tried it when I was like a young kid, but then as I grew up a little bit, I kind of I don't know. My body just can't take eggs like it used to. <laughs> I don't know why anyone would drink a drink with eggs in it. I also don't like milk, and I would never drink it as a beverage. Mm. So I don't need to go anywhere near eggnog. Yeah, eggnog's not it for me. I don't like the scent, and I don't... It's just gross for me. But I don't... You probably don't know this drink. It's called sorrel. It's like a Jamaican delicacy, and it's something that we use every Christmas. It's like a thing. I love it, but some people sweeten it with milk. What is it? Gross. It's like a leaf, a plant. It's a plant, not a leaf. You boil it. And it's like you draw it like you draw tea. I was going to say, so it's like tea. And you, But it's made into like a juice. Like you go to Starbucks and be like, can I have a blah, blah, blah. Uh, so it's cold? It's cold, mm. yeah. So you add rum to it. I like rum in it. Not everyone wants rum in it, but hey, I like rum. <laughs> I like it when it's sweetened with sugar and lemon. So it's like kind of a lemonade. Hmm. It's really good. I like it. And you drink it around Christmas? Yeah, it's most like in Jamaica it's done around Christmas time like always. Festive. Hmm. Festive, yeah. I like apple cider. Apple cider. I haven't had it, but I've heard that it's gross. I mean, I think you can I don't know. <laughs> so is it not gross? I've had some that are gross, but it's like it's kind of like apple juice. You know how you drink some apple but it's juices, hot, right? Yeah, I don't want hot apple juice. Well, not it doesn't. I mean, it's an apple drink, but I'm saying you know how sometimes you drink an apple juice and you're like, this is not a good apple juice. Yeah, some of them and are. Ta- yeah, it's. I feel like it's like that with the apple cider. Kay. Sometimes you drink them and you're like, do you no, buy this it is not or do you batch. make it from scratch? I buy it. Oh, you don't make anything from scratch. No, I don't make anything from scratch. Uh, but yeah, it just warm it up a bit. I mean, some people drink it like hot, like coffee so uh, i need to understand this do you go to the store look for apple cider or do you just get apple juice and warm it in the microwave like what no you go to the store and get apple cider okay i'm just checking because it's, like, it's like cider made like cider i can't re- re- i love shopping going to the grocery store i can't recall seeing apple cider maybe because i never look for it i feel like the only time i've seen it it's just in like a plain old jug oh like no no packaging or anything. I don't know. 
Yeah, it's probably one of those, um, what do you call it, no-name brands? <laughs> oh, for sure. Uh, what are some other Christmas traditions you guys do uh, growing up? Mm, put baby Jesus in the... Manger? Yeah, in the nativity scene. I never scene. had a nativity scene, and I always wanted one. Why did you always want one? Because I thought it was so cute, but then again, personally, I don't believe in Christmas as in the whole birth of Christ thing. So it doesn't matter to me, but I thought it was cute. We used to have two. Um, now we just have one. Like we used to have one that was like my grandfather built like this little wooden manger, and okay. it had these like little figurines in it. Oh, y'all were serious and about a little, it, little baby Jesus. And now it's um, like like Joseph is like two feet tall. Whoa! It's like that. And then there's like a baby Jesus, but he's like I don't know. Like six is this outside long. or is this inside? This is inside. Okay, so a whole section of your living room is dedicated to the nativity Not a section. Scene. I mean, now it's just like there's a there's a I don't know, a table dresser whatever in our dining room. It just sits on there, and then the little whatever that baby Jesus sits in is empty. On Christmas morning, we put the Jesus in. Ugh, I can't wait till I buy my first home because remember that little Christmas shop we saw in Montreal? Yeah. I'm going in there with $10,000 and I'm wiping them clean. I just, really? I just want everything in there. <laughs> when I was young, we used to <laughs> decorate the house a lot. Like there was Christmas decorations in every room. Um, There's a few years where we had a tree on the main level and a tree downstairs. Garland all over everything. Like everything was all Christmas decked out. Now I go back there and it's like nothing. Trees up. That's that's it, it. probably. Maybe some garland on the railing. That's it. Mm. I mean, it takes a lot of work. I would take a weekend to do it if I were if I just don't want to do it in my apartment. Like my apartment, if I was going to if I'm going to be in that space for Christmas, sure. I'll do it up, but for the past few Christmases I've like spent it with friends and whatever. So I didn't really have to do a lot of work decorating, thank God. But once I do get my dream space, best to believe it's going to look like Santa Claus shit all over that. Jeez. I'm sorry. I'm into it. I mean, I only want to do it if you're like entertaining. I want to oh, do it for but myself. I love to entertain on Christmas too. Like I remember a few, like every Christmas with my parents... Uh, my cousins, my aunts would come over. Sometimes I'd have friends from college come down and have Christmas dinner with us. Like, I, I, I'll come one, come all. We have food for everybody. But I think that's the only point of, like, decorating your whole place up is if you're going to entertain. I would never, like, deck it out just for, for yourself. Me. Or, like, if I had, like, just, like, a family of four, I don't need to go overboard with the decorations. Oh, my God. If I, I mean, had a family they, of four, my if place the kids want to do it, look of course. like a winter wonderland. When I was young, I used to decorate the house at Christmas all the time. I think there's like a... Did you have PD days or PA days? No. It's like just... From day, school? Yeah. Days you get off school where the teachers... Like professional development days. They go take courses and whatever. Uh, even when we did that, for or teachers would have to get a substitute for us. Seems like a lot of money. Anyways, the, you, you, know pe- what I've you noticed periodically the get PD days. Education system in North America is really different. <laughs> yeah. They give you guys days off. So we would have a day off like at the end of November. And then the, we usually like decorate on that day off. Nice. Like decorating. I would just do that on a weekend. It's like not a big deal. Mm. I think my mom used it as like a marker to like for me to like get off her back. Oh, because you'd be that annoying kid like, Mom, when are we going to put up the decorations? Oh, and my she'd God. she'd be like, that? you can do it on PD Day, which was always like towards the end of November. It sounds to me like Christmas was more for you than it was for anyone else in the household. Anyone else in the household. Well, that's why I think it's not as decorated. Now. Yeah. Because they're like... there's still buckets of decorations in the basement, but she just puts up the tree and that's pretty much it. Hmm. Another Christmas tradition for me personally is watching a bunch of Christmas movies. I don't watch a lot of Christmas movies. What? It doesn't really do it for me. Oh you, you my know goodness. I don't even like watching movies. Well, I love Christmas movies. Uh, one of my favorites is Obvious. <laughs> Home Alone 1. Not Home Alone How's 2, Home obvious? Alone 3, not Home Alone 4, whatever. The first one was the best one for me. 
How's that obvious? Because it's a classic. Okay. What do you mean, okay? you like, it's an obvi- obvious for me. I don't know. I would never pick that. What's one of your favorite Christmas movies? Mm, I don't know. I like uh, Christmas with the Cranks. You know, I... I didn't hate it, but that it's not was, it's not a classic that for was me. Good. I liked Four Christmases where they have the divorced family and they visit all four yeah. houses. That was good. Those aren't classics though. People are obsessed with Elf. Wasn't really that into I it. I didn't love Elf. It's good, but I'm not dying to go watch it again. You know what else I loved? A Miracle on thirty fourth Street. Oh god. That was one of my absolute favorites, Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street. Uh, Home Alone 1 and I also love to watch Charlie Brown yeah those are no's for me no's? oh wow I don't need none of that that's those are you are missing out I'm not missing out I've seen them all and you don't love them? no that's what I'm saying I need to go find one I don't know which one I have so many platforms or streaming services that are out now I don't know who has Miracle on 34th Street, but I need to find it so I can watch it. I mean, it airs on TV every Christmas Eve. Yeah, I don't have cable anymore. I got rid of that. Remember I showed you the app where you could watch it? I forget. I'll just go find it online, bootleg that shit. Joking. Don't do that. We don't do that. The movie (laughs) came out like 100 years ago. It doesn't matter at this point. But yeah, I love Christmas movies. So the entire month of December for me is just watch Christmas movies, get into that feeling, get the nostalgia going and all of that. And then you, I start preparing for Christmas Day like two to three days before. So all my meats are seasoned days before. I'm starting to bake from the night before. The morning of, I'm just like putting stuff in the oven and on top of the stove to finish because everything's been prepped. Mise en place, done. I'm just, the day of, I wake up at like 6 o'clock in the morning. I'm the only person up in the house. 6 o'clock? Y- yeah. How long does it take your food to cook? Are it you dep- one of those people who eats early dinner? Uh, it de- Well, I like for my food to be done by like 3.30. Is that early? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. So meanwhile, like everything's being cooked. And so I'm doing like roasted this, baked that. A lot of these things are like time consuming. So put it in there, let it cook slowly. And meanwhile, that's going on. I like bake something with my younger sister because she loves to cook as well and love to teach her new things. We'll bake together. Hmm. So that's my little uh, process. Do you have a favorite Christmas gift that you've ever gotten? Oh, my God. I don't know. I mean, as a kid, toys, I guess. But <laughs> I asked you for a favorite I Christmas don't know. gift, not like a genre. As a, I can't recall something that I was like, oh my goodness, this is the best gift of my life. Since being older, I haven't gotten that many gifts because, you know, you're grown. And no, I can't recall a favorite gift I've ever gotten. For Christmas specifically. I have gotten some really amazing gifts in my lifetime. But Christmas specifically? I don't know. I love to give gifts for Christmas. I don't really care that much about receiving them. Yeah, I'm not a great gift receiver. Because I don't really show... I don't emote very well. So no. even when I'm into a gift, it's like... You're not getting a reaction. I'll be Which like, oh, is thank you. not great for the gift giver. Because they're like, do you even like it? I know. But I do like giving gifts. Although this year is just a wash because... You don't know what to get anyone. Yeah, I don't know what to get anyone. Usually I'll, I'll just buy gifts throughout the year. Like as soon as Christmas is done, I start Christmas shopping for next Christmas. I do that too. I and buy I just gifts put things away throughout the year. But I didn't do that this year. And now we're getting so close to Christmas time. And it's like COVID. I can't even go around and shop. So I'm trying to look at stuff online and hope it gets here and into- it's just not going to be the best year for uh, Cody's gift giving. Uh, sucks. But uh, <laughs> it is what it is. It's a, it's just a rough year. I started Christmas shopping since the summer. I thought I was going to be spending Christmas with uh, a, a specific group of friends. I don't know if that's still going to happen. So I started uh, buying gifts for everyone and 
for like my family i've already bought them whatever i wanted to get them i'm going to ship that to them so they can get it on christmas and yeah everything's like you didn't ship it yet no i'm shipping it this week you better get on it no i'm not doing like regular po- mail i'm like getting it expressed it doesn't matter what do you mean it doesn't matter it should be there in two days dhl and or fedex or whoever i choose better not play with me I'm just saying you're getting really close to Christmas, which is already like a busy, a busy year. shipping year. I and know. even more because everybody's online shopping this year. Not everybody, but a lot of people. I know. I would be so mad if I shipped it and it didn't get there on time. Because you know I have no patience for shipping. When I'm buying stuff online, I'm always choosing the quickest delivery time, no matter what. And I would do that with Amazon for the longest while until finally I got convinced to getting Amazon Prime. And then I ended up buying way too many things because I'm like, woo, free shipping every day. And I just couldn't help myself until I like cut myself off of Amazon. I no longer have a subscription with them. You know, you have to like really watch yourself. <laughs> mm. But anytime I buy something online, they're like, free shipping in two weeks, you'll get it. Pay an extra something and you'll get it in two days. I'm like, this extra something will not kill me. I want it tomorrow. No, I always do free shipping. Whenever it's free shipping, I get so anxious because I don't know when it's arriving. Sometimes it's two weeks have passed. It's two weeks and a day. And then I'm tearing out my hair. Not really. I just don't. I just assume everything will take a week. And then you look at five the tr- to seven the business days. Mm, some people are not so Unless good it's with international. it. And that too. I buy a lot of international stuff. Because, to be honest, I love Canada, but there's just not that great a shopping experience here. I mean, if it's coming from the States, it should still be five to seven. I mean, like, overseas. It should be, but no, but I buy a lot of stuff from the UK. Yeah, that's like two weeks. So I'm always buying stuff from the UK or America. If I get something from Canada, great. Please, some places in Canada, some places are in Toronto, and they're talking about a whole week's for, a week for shipping. Yeah, that's ridiculous. But that's probably just, it takes them a while to pack it up. Like, it shouldn't yeah, take that long. That to... turns me all the way off. At that point, I don't want to buy nothing from you. Sorry. True. But anyways, guys, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to whatever you're listening to this on. Leave comments. It makes people find us easier. Uh, until next time. Bye. Bye.